Now, for a moment, let's say that you, well, let's call you Rose, the most popular name of the time period. You were head of foot pedal machine for a few years, stitching away at the rate of 34 stitches per minute. You really can't make any mistakes, or your pay would be done. Then, after a few years, the foot pedal is replaced by an electric machine with a rate of 3,000 stitches per minute. You are still a necessary cog in the great fashion machine. After all, you run the fabric under the needle. But here's the thing, you don't get any breaks. You work for 14 hours because time is money. Oh, you need to go to the bathroom? You don't even dare ask the foreman. And no legislation has even been dreamed of that would regulate basic hygiene. You have your job, which is good news, but if you make one button hole that ruins a shirt waist, your pay would be docked. Needle go through your finger. <gasps> Keep on working. Discontent started small. The union was called the International Ladies Garment Workers Union, and it was new, but grown. There were small strikes at first, one even led against a triangle shirtwaist factory. In their meetings, they even quoted Mother Jones with her famous line, this is not play, this is fight. I toured New England during this turbulent time. All of those mink-clad college girls, I just stirred them up like they'd never been before. Vassar, Wellesley, oh, you should have seen the press coverage once we started speaking to those fascinating young women. The press thought they were amusing, landing in jail and quibbling with the deplorable conditions for the one night they were in there. There was Anne Morgan, daughter of J.P. Morgan, ever hear of him? Oh, she desperately wanted to help our cause. The press dubbed them the Mink Brigade. Well, they were socialites, who cared, but perhaps they took away from the cause. In 1909, when we picketed, the press loved us. Good old Anne Morgan jumps into the fray, the press loves us even more. Those who went to jail got the most attention, but all this was more fuss and bother. Interest waned. Anne Morgan came from privilege and wasn't too crazy about socialist ideas or real reform. I am heartily in favor of these strikers. But these fanatical doctrines are all the more dangerous because they tend to tear down all the good in our present social state. And she quit. But I couldn't afford to do something like that. I was already so involved, a full-time organizer, the vice president of the New York branch of the Women's Trade Union League. These socialites should have tried working a shift in New York or Philadelphia, where the situation was alarmingly parallel. Frances Perkins never worked in a factory in her life the way I did. But Frances was someone who couldn't get up in the morning if she did not work tirelessly to change conditions. 